Welcome everybody, bonjour à tous. My name is Samita Bharadwaj, the co-founder of Geneva International, the podcasting initiative at the Graduate Institute of Geneva. As you can see, I'm joined here by these lovely people to discuss something very interesting today afternoon, this lovely August after afternoon on happiness. So we're going to be discussing on a few aspects of happiness, the science of well-being and how they have been doing through this lockdown. Uh, I'm going to be doing a short introduction of all these three lovely people over here. So let me begin with Sophie De Hoog, an alumni of the Graduate Institute. She graduated in 2009 from a Master's in International Affairs. She co-founded So Happy, the Wellbeing and Self-Development Center in Plum Palais, which we are here currently recording this podcast. Mukta Dere is pursuing her Master's in International Affairs at the Graduate Institute. Uh, she is a communication enthusiast. She's a poet. And fun fact, she start, she's published her very first book on Deep in My Thoughts um, that actually portrays the journey of poetry all, all the way from adolescence to adulthood. Um, then we have Claire Ransom here, who is pursuing her development studies, her master's in development studies at the Graduate Institute. She's a passionate environment lover. She's also a communication enthusiast, just like Mukta. And uh, she also mentioned that she was fortunate enough in high school that they encouraged um, development and uh, self-care. And that has also helped her to, um, to understand well-being in a broader social sense. So we'll begin with our very first question now. What does happiness mean to all of you? So you have your pens, you have your markers. Get jotting and let me know. OK. Show them. <laughs> all right. So Mukta. What was micro about? Happiness is micro because happiness lies in this intricacies, in the little things, and they're very, very important. So yeah, I believe happiness uh, can be found in the daisy that you observe um, through the sidewalk, or when you just make through the green light signal, or you come back home to a cozy bed after a long, tiring day. So I do really feel that happiness can come in all shapes, sizes, textures, colors. Um, it can be loud or low, it can be fast or slow, but it has its own pace and it's definitely not a race. <laughs> wow, lovely. I mean, what about you, Claire? What do you have? So first of all, thank you, Mukta. That was beautiful. Uh, and I wrote lightness because I really believe that happiness is a feeling of lightness, a lightness of soul, a lightness of being. And I completely agree that it's in the small moments and these sort of micro seconds of our lives and that then can last for just that one second or it can go on for minutes or hours or days even that you can just sort of float away almost that the weight that's pulling you down from your day-to-day -day activities disappears and you just, you're present, you're light and you could almost float. Mm. And then the, the ever presence, the, the being present in moment was very much similar to yours, right? So for yours was here and now. Yes, indeed. I actually wrote two words instead of one. I hope it's okay. Yeah, yeah no. I did right here and now because I believe that it is key to stay in the moment, mm. that you can be doing pretty much everything. It can be very small things or it can be very important things. You can be playing, you can be working, but that what matters is to actually be here and now I would say that it's especially important for human connection, meaning that you see, like we are here and now together. Mm. We're not thinking about what you did yesterday or your plan for the evening. It's it's both a sign of respect to the person with whom you are, but it's also a way, I would say, uh, a highway to happiness. Mm. To yeah. Wow. Well. In, in just in relation to what both of you said, it just came to my mind. Uh, a very beautiful quote from Alice in Wonderland. How long is forever? Sometimes just one second. So. And coming from that point that there are different definitions and different meanings, different uh, facts also about happiness. Uh, there are a lot of things that people get wrong about happiness. So there are certain misconceptions. Um, happiness is supposed to be sort of this one thing where you get a lottery check or you get a great grade uh, in your uh, exam paper. Or you probably get a job. Of course, these are some things that are important. But again, this could be 
sort of a one size fits all sort of a definition which happiness is not right so what could you guys tell me what are the misconceptions about happiness so let's start with Sophie here would you have anything yeah actually I, I think that uh, what you mentioned is totally true that it's not about winning the lottery or even mm. getting good grades and I think one of the main misconceptions about happiness is that it mostly depends on external things, mm. which is everything that you listed, you know, like grades or something external, winning the lottery is something external. I would even go further as finding true love or mm. even being in good health. Mm. So these are all things which we believe are kind of prerequisite for us to be happy. And it turns out that research shows we actually depend only about like 10% for our happiness on these kind of uh, external events and that 90% is somewhere else. I think that what is key to understand is that we can of course work on this 10% and it, it's not lost. It's important to make sure that mm. you are happy with your job, that you're very happy with your partner, that you have the necessary amount of money to do what you feel what you think is key for you mm. and also to work towards your health. These are things that are important, but they are not making the bulk of your happiness. True. So True. the bad news is, is that more or less 50% of the rest is, uh, is genetic. So mm. <laughs> it's like oh. <laughs> more or less happy. And, and you probably know, like people are super cheerful and some of them which are kind of, you know, like grouches <laughs> and, and very hard to make them smile. So it doesn't mean that we are at zero or 50% mm. about this part. It's more like we're all in between. But working on that, you can think, like, yeah, but there are 40% remaining. If they're not about our genetic and they're not about what happens to us, what is it about? And, and I think the misconception about happiness is to forget about this 40%, to forget that we are actually on the driver's seat. We can do a lot because those 40% are about practice. They're about perceptions, they're about expectation, and they're about our habits. What are our ha uh, happiness habits? What do we do every day? And, and yes, I mean, people invest a lot, again, in energy, in time, in money, into getting perfect bodies, which are also something <laughs> external. True. And why don't we do the same for our happiness? Why don't you wake up every day thinking, mm. what did I do today to yeah. be happier? Absolutely. So I think this is really what I want to stress here, is that we have total power on mm. those 40%, and this is already a lot. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is what I would say is a big misconception about happiness, that waiting about whatever will happen to you, and then maybe I will be happier. No, it's, it's really, it's today, and, and we can do a lot every day of our lives to make sure we're happier for us, but also for everyone living around mm -hmm. us, because it's kind of a duty also. Mm. You're absolutely right. I mean, external rewards, external circumstances are, are something that people chase after. Mm -hmm. But it's not supposed to be chased after, mm -hmm. where it's supposed to be something that's born within, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah Claire, go ahead. Add to that. I think um, my main misconception about happiness really stems quite nicely off of yours, which is that happiness is very individual. It's something mm. that we create ourselves mm. and that we all have different definitions just between the three of us, but that it's yeah. something that is very unique to us. And yeah. what's gonna give us these moments or this, this feeling of happiness mm -hmm. is very different for each of us. And of course, there are habits that we can all share or that have been known to, to help exercise as one of them, meditation, sure. yoga. But at the end of the day, happiness is a very individual experience. Mm. And I think one of the biggest problems with happiness in our society, particularly given technology and the abundance of social media, is that we can see other people mm -hmm. and project That's happiness true. on them or to think that their lives are this idea of perfection or yes. their lives are so perfect, they're so happy, yeah. they've got the body, they've got the love, they've got the job, when yeah. really that comparison is so detrimental mm -hmm. to our own happiness and to our own mental health that it's such it's so so important to think back into that internal into your own sort of active voice and think about what is it that drives your own happiness and to think only about your your sort of bubble your internal and then i completely agree pursue that and that 40 percent because it is it is huge mm -hmm. and that can be uh i think very challenging today in society just to see everybody around us and everybody else's experiences but to reflect a little bit more inside and to think about your own experience and your own emotions and feelings. Mm. And I think with that also comes the idea of scale. Mm. So.
getting that job, getting into the university, of course, I mean, that, that moment, that feeling was amazing. I screamed, I was at work, I ran up the stairs, I think I disrupted a couple different classes. Um, I was so, so thrilled, but of course that's not what we feel and we experience at the Graduate Institute every day. Sorry. Yeah. I love my experience. But of course, but it's, you're, we can't pursue those huge moments every day, that's just not sustainable, but that doesn't mean that we can't be happy in our everyday lives and that knowing the different levels of scale of happiness and knowing that it can just be a very micro thing, a very mm -hmm. sort of small fleeting moment, but that doesn't make it any less important. And so knowing how to sort of pursue those moments and how to create that and to have those feelings no matter what situation you're in mm. is so, so crucial. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I completely relate to that when it comes to little simple things that you had mentioned that being profound, being that are profound, that are very simple and the micro things. And as you related, it's the lightness that carries in the moments that matter. What about you, Mukta? I would like to talk about the destination addiction that this age is the victim of. And what is a destination addiction? We're always waiting for Friday, for summer, for the perfect partner, for the perfect job, like you mentioned. And we kind of believe that the construct of the construct in our mind is that we would achieve happiness when we get that thing, when we go there. You know, we are living in the age of TGIF. Thank God it's right. Yeah. No, every day is happy if you make it happy. Wow. So I think that if your ultimate destination is happiness, then one must make it a habit, a ritual, and not a not not something you chase after, like you mentioned. It's it's to seek um, and not to chase after. So yeah. Lovely, lovely. Uh, very wise words from all of you. <laughs> So that ends our part one of this podcast on happiness in lockdown. We covered two main questions on this part. What does happiness mean to you? And what are the misconceptions about happiness? Now, before we move on to the next part, we wanted to ask, what does happiness mean to you? Comment down below and let us know. Catch us on our next part two of this podcast, where we look at another question about happiness in lockdown. We hope you enjoyed this part and we hope to see you soon and stay happy. Bye-bye.